Hi everyone, I am Joe Mazzalotti, and this is another deep dive into some daily log open source code. Today, we're going to cover how we render native components with Strata, like this little button up on the top here. Daily log is a simple app that's available on web and on iOS, Android is coming soon, that allows me to keep track of the metrics that matter in my day, exercise, medication, water, and food. It's available in the App Store, and it's also open source. Today, like I said, we're going to dive into Strata. So on web, we have this web button, this web link that when we click it, opens up our settings screen. We can change from empirical to metric units and set our time zone. On iOS, we have a native component. We have our native nav bar up here, which is where the web view slides under. It's where the screens will get pushed onto the stack. And we have this native UI bar button item up here that when we click it, visits that same settings screen. How does this all work? Under the hood, Strata is being used, broken down into three different pieces. The HTML markup to say where to put this button, the stimulus controller that wires it up, and then the iOS component that actually renders out this little button. So let's dive into each of those. First up is the stimulus controller. App JavaScript controllers bridge is where I keep all of my Strata components. And I'm gonna open up this button controller. I'm having some problems with my Vim swap files right now, sorry for that. Here we have the entire bridge component and all it does, it, it subclasses from a stimulus controller, so it should look pretty familiar to you. On connect, we call a private function called notify bridge of connect. What this is doing is gathering up some attributes from our HTML and then sending the connect message to our iOS app to render that button on the screen. We pass in two different parameters. We pass in the image, so what image we want to display on the client. And then we also pass the side. Are we putting the button on the left side of the screen or on the right side of the screen? This gets wired up in our day show. We have a link here on the bottom that's linking to settings, the settings path. Here's our data controller to wire up our bridge button. We're using the person.circle iOS name. I'll show you where that comes from in a second. And we're putting it on the left side. Finally, we're styling it as a button, but we're also hiding it for non-Turbo native apps. This means that if on, a, on the web, this would always be hidden. And on Turbo native, it would only get hidden if that Strata component is wired up. So where does this person circle come from? That comes from SF symbols. This is a built in to iOS and we can search for and use these symbols person.circle and there we have it across our iOS app without having to do any downloading or anything. We can just reference it by string, which makes it really, really helpful. So now that we have kind of like the message going over the wire, we're sending the connect message with a kind of hash of, of attributes, where does that happen on the iOS app? Well, we have our button control, our button component on the iOS app that listens for these events. So here we have a button component that inherits from our bridge component. That's where Strata is coming in. And the first thing we do is override this name. We wire up this name called button that matches the name of our component. This is how Strata knows which messages to send to which components under the hood when they get wired up, when they start to display. Notice we're not calling this.send button connect, we're calling this.send and it knows to fire it to the button component. On receive is kind of the entry level callback that we get or the call that we get when the stimulus controller fires a message. Here, what we're doing is on every message we receive, we're going to add a button via that message to our view controller. Our view controller is coming from the bridge component. Uh, we got a reference to our delegate, we get a reference to that destination, and we cast it as a UI view controller. This is kind of some boilerplate that will probably always exist in your bridge components, but it's essentially saying who is in charge of rendering this screen right now, and are they a view controller? So we're gonna make sure that they are a view controller with this optional cast here. Finally, the meat of the actual functionality here is that we grab our data from the message. We grab that image name, and remember here's that data.image. So right now this is a string, 
which is going to be person.circle, that's going to be passed into system name initializer to give us the image that we're showing on the iOS app right here. We're going to wire up an action. This essentially is a block that gets called when something happens. This block is going to reply to the connect callback. Now, where did connect come from? Remember, back in our stimulus controller, we called this.send connect. When we reply to that, this self.reply to connect, we call the callback, this block here, or sorry, this block here. This callback is going to say, click on the element that this was wired up to. And remember earlier from our day show view, that is a link, an A tag. So when we actually fire back, we're just calling click on top of this link, which encounters all of the normal things as if a user clicked that button or that link themselves. Back at Xcode, once we have our action wired up, we're gonna create that button. The UI bar button item is what lives in the top left of the screen, giving it a title, that image, and then an action to do when it's tapped. And finally, we parse out the data side. If it's on the right, we throw it on the right side. Otherwise, we throw it on the left side, kind of like a default options there. I like to default to this because you're probably gonna throw the button in the left. You might Your app might be different. You might wanna not override the back button, so you might switch this logic, but you essentially probably always want to pass down right or left. There's one more piece on the iOS side that I think is interesting, and that's this private extension down here. This extension for message data lets us extract out the three different properties that we need to get when we call dot data on it. We have a title, an image, and a side, and those match up exactly with our hash here, title, image, and side. So if we wanted to add more attributes in here, like um, different callbacks or different colors or anything like that, we'd have to add them to this hash here and then also make sure that we were parsing them out in our decodable extension of our message data. That's what gets us that strongly typed uh, API where we can start to do data.side and actually have know that that is always going to be a string because we defined it down here in message data. So that's how we add this native component off to the left with the button. There's two more components that I use in daily log. One is one that you're probably noticing this forward and backwards, which we can navigate between screens. The code on that isn't much different than this, but instead of saying, add this to the left or the right, we say, add it to the left and the right and have them wire up different buttons. The last one is if I look at a form, if I look at a form on the web, You'll see that I have a save button down in the bottom right, pretty standard practice for a web form. But on iOS, we move that to a native bar button item, button item that then submits the form for us. The good news about this is that this code is lifted almost entirely from the Turbo iOS demo app. Not much I changed there except maybe some code formatting, but this is a really helpful component that I add to probably all of my apps that gives us that little bit extra native feel. And since you're copying and pasting most of the code, there's not much code you have to write yourself. It's really just extracting out how to tell the iOS app when to add that button through your stimulus controller and your markup. Feel free to dive into the open source code base of the Rails and iOS app of Daily Log. I'll have a link in the comments below. And you can take a look and see how that will work for you. So, that wraps up our little quick introduction of how to use, how Strata is used in the Daily Log app. Again, I'm Joe Mazzalotti. I do a newsletter every week on Hotwire, diving into a specific topic. This week we dove into Turbo Native and Strata and subscribe on mazzalotti.com to learn more about Turbo Native and how to level up your Hotwire. Thanks.